We have a couple mini solar storms that have been launched towards Earth and back-to-back -back peaks at the new solar cycle, but don't blink or you may miss them. Those stories and more in the news this week. Space weather this week is definitely quiet, but that doesn't lessen the excitement. We've had several regions on the Earth-facing disk that actually have been firing off little mini solar storms. Region 2726 started off right around on the 13th, firing little Earth-directed storms, and we have confirmed them with stereo. They are Earth-directed, but they're really tiny, so they're probably not going to cause much of a disturbance. But they will be aligned with this northern coronal hole finger that we have that could be sending us some fast wind. So a combination of this here starting around the 18th with some fast wind and these little mini solar storms kind of embedded in it could easily jump us up to active conditions at high latitudes. Now we also have a, a southern polar coronal hole that will be rotating into the Earth's strike zone in about mm, five days, maybe a little bit more. And it could also be sending us some fast wind, just a skosh. So we might have another chance for high latitude aurora. We'll have to see. But this is the only story. While all of this was going on, we also had some very interesting activity in the higher latitudes with some sunspots. Starting around the 9th, we had a little bit of a sunspot peek through the surface. And if you notice, it's high latitude. And if we look at the magnetogram, it's actually reversed in polarity from a normal sunspot. So this is one from a new cycle, but in, and it did actually become a sunspot momentarily right before it dove back down under the surface. So I'm not even sure it got a designation as a number by NOAA. Then as we jump forward to November 17th, again at high latitudes, check this out. Another region, I mean, it's hardly been a week later, and we've got a second region that's high latitude with the reverse polarity. So this is yet another sunspot from the new cycle. Two in two weeks, who would have figured that? And we're watching this very closely to see if it's gonna continue growing or if it's gonna dive back under the surface just like the first one did. Switching to your M-flare threat meter, you can see we continue to be extremely low when it comes to the X-ray flux and therefore by proxy the solar flux is low. We are well below the B floor with very little flare activity. Even with the new regions emerging on the Earth-facing disk, we've only bumped up just a little bit and especially in the last few days, which may be due to that new cycle sunspot that we're seeing. But at any rate, we've bumped into the low range of marginal for radio propagation and we do have some new regions that will be rotating into Earth view here in the next week, so marginal radio propagation conditions may continue over the next few days. Switching to your solar storm conditions, you can see the last time we actually hit storm levels was back on November 5th, and that was for some fast wind from that coronal hole that we've done multiple dances with. We actually reached a G2 level storm, which was fantastic and got some gorgeous aurora. Since then, we calmed down just a little bit and then got hit again uh, by a smaller pocket of fast wind from another coronal hole, and that brought us up to active conditions around the 8th through about the 10th before we began to calm back down. Now, since then, things have gotten quieter and quieter, and now it's pretty much flatlined when it comes to solar storms. This is about as minimum as solar minimum gets when it comes to the KP index. You can't get much worse than ones and zeros. But this isn't going to last because we expect that pocket of fast wind to hit us along with those little mini solar storms, and that could bump us back up to at least unsettled conditions, maybe even active conditions at high latitudes over the next couple days, and then things will probably settle down just a little bit before we have yet another pocket of fast wind that could hit us. So don't expect these quiet conditions to last for much longer. And with the multiple solar storms that we've had over the past few weeks, there has been some amazing aurora views over many parts of the world. And I want to thank all you aurora field reporters for sharing your shots with me. I don't have a hope of showing all of them, so I've just picked a few, and maybe next week I'll show some, even some more. So let's start with some gorgeous aurora. We had a phoenix-like uh, corona over Norway, and some other beautiful aurora over Norway. We saw it in Estonia, and in Scotland, there's a selfie, lucky gal, and it was all over Ireland. It was seen in Shetland, and it absolutely lit the skies in Iceland. 
And as we travel over the pond, it was seen in Manitoba, Canada in several places. And it even dipped into the United States. We saw it in North Dakota and a back of the cam shot in Iowa. It was seen in Montana, in Washington on a webcam, and clear down to Wyoming. And in the south, it lit the skies. It was all over New Zealand with beautiful pillars and everything. Oh. And it was also in many parts of Tasmania. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A, it's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And what you can see on the West Lemon Stereo's view are some of those bright regions. Now, these are the regions that are facing Earth and fired off some mini solar storms starting around the 13th. And you can actually see them if you look closely, you can see them kind of firing off and, and heading some stuff towards Earth. So thanks to Stereo's view, we actually do know we are going to get some disturbed wind starting around the 18th. Now, on top of that, there are two coronal holes that are in the backside view. One is really small and it's probably not going to give us much, but the other one is quite large. And this is that same one that gave us the storm back on November 5th. And lo and behold, it's still around. So it looks like we're going to do yet another dance with this coronal hole. This has been, what, four or five times that we're going to be having this dance? So we're getting pretty used to this player here. On top of that, we also have some bright regions on the sun's backside, and that should make you amateur radio operators and emergency responders very happy. We're probably going to stay up into the marginal range for radio propagation as these regions rotate onto the Earth-facing disk here in the next few days. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from that small pocket of fast wind from that northern coronal hole. Uh, add to that the mini solar storms that are on their way, and we're going to be expecting active conditions at high latitudes with up to about a 30% chance of a major storm. Now, at mid latitudes, we're only expecting unsettled conditions with about a 20% chance of active conditions and even a skosh of a chance of a minor storm, but most likely things are going to remain pretty unsettled. And then things will calm back down until we hit about the weekend when we have yet another chance for some more fast wind that could bump us back up to unsettled, maybe even active conditions. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is still in the green when it comes to solar flares. We do have a uh, region 2727 on the Earth-facing disk right now, and that new cycle region might be numbered here in the next day or so, but neither of them are really flare players, so we don't have to worry about radio blackouts, which should make you GPS users very happy. Now, amateur radio operators, you should also be pretty happy. The sun is saying, 73, and it gives you good greetings. We're back into marginal range for radio propagation, and it looks like with the new regions rotating into Earth view here in the next few days, these conditions should continue. Now, as we turn to cosmic ray flux, we are at solar minimum, which does mean that the cosmic ray penetration is a bit more intense than it normally would be. So you frequent flyers, and this does include prenatal passengers. These are flyers that fly at high latitudes and high altitudes. You are in the marginal range for radiation dose, so please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is very exciting. Even though it's quiet right now, this isn't going to last. We have some fast wind from a finger-like portion of a northern coronal hole, and it should be hitting us here over the next day. And along with some mini solar storms are going to add to the disturbance, we could easily bump up to active conditions, which could bring us some aurora, especially down to high latitudes and maybe even for a short while at mid-latitudes. So your aurora photographers definitely keep your batteries charged. Now, on top of that, we have region 2727 and a region from the new solar cycle on the Earth-facing disk right now, and that has bumped the uh, solar flux up into, well, it, the sun is saying 73, so what, what more can you say? And this could easily continue as even more regions rotate into Earth view. We could easily stay at marginal radio propagation conditions over the next few days, maybe even over the next week or so before things begin to calm back 
back down. Plus the fact that we've had two new uh, sunspots from the new cycle. This, over the last, what, week? Maybe week and a half. This is probably the strongest indicator of the new cycle coming on board. So it should also give you amateur radio operators something absolutely to celebrate. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.